Give us a little backstory with Smokey and... So I've had Smokey for about five years, acquired her from a gentleman who had to get rid of her because he had COPD. He did tell me sh that she was fearful because he had dropped her. Mm -hmm. So she has fear about stepping up onto my hand. Is is sweet until she's not, and she loves to bite me. <laughs> um, and I'm fearful because I'm... I got bit several times trying to get her, out, get her here today. So it's a fear thing with me and perhaps not reading her cues the right way. Mm -hmm. And I, I would just like to be able to interact with them more. Okay. And I'm not going to lie, I'm scared of getting bit. I've been bit too many times. Mm -hmm. The other one ripped off my fingernail once mm -hmm. and that traumatized me for a while. And this one, um, I have a scar here where she bit me. Just now, like five minutes ago, she put down her head, like scratched my head, and I scratched her head, and she tried to bite me. You know, so I'm, okay. I'm misreading something here. What really got me was when she was working with Morgan, and I watched the whole series. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Um, cool. Aww. Sorry. I know. I it's okay. Think I get so <laughs> That's but okay. Yeah, so I've been watching you guys ever since. Awesome. Well, we'd love to be able to help you out. And um, the, the first thing that I want to address, and this is something that we've dealt with for two days, so that it's going to feel like I'm singling you out because they've already heard this lesson. Whenever I hear people speak in absolutes, I pause them and I question it. And I've, it's been really fun calling these guys out. <laughs> so I heard you say that Smokey loves being on top of the cage and that... Uh, one of the birds loves your husband, yeah. and then you'd specifically said loves to bite you, right? And I know that you're in in some cases that word might be accurate. Yep. But yesterday it was like Jaden loves being on the tree, and I'm like, how do you know? Mm. Right. Right. Well, Jaden doesn't love being on the tree because we can't get Jaden to fly. This is a little Amazon, but he tries to commit suicide every time he's on the tree. Right. He drops off like a rock. So, really. So. If you're, we're operating in the space of like, my bird loves this, we might miss that the bird actually feels punished being on the tree mm. and doesn't actually love it. I try to use words that are more descriptive, that are more descriptive and accurate to, a, to the scenario. So an easy one would be like, Harley gets really excited when we get close. Is it excited good or is it excited bad? Well, excited to us probably means good, but we prefer to use the word heightened. So heightened, if we start to address how we speak about the birds, then we can look at the scenario from both sides and stop assuming that the bird actually loves something. Because I can tell you the 100% fact, Jinx loves being pet on the head. Yep. I can also tell you the 100% fact, Jinx hates being pet on the head. Mm -hmm. Right? The scenario dictates whether he loves it or hates it. And so uh, the easier way to do everything is to approach it with almost a neutral term and, uh, and then it allows us to, to dig deeper. So if you hear yourself speak in absolutes, if you hear yourself particularly use the word love, yep. pause and question yourself, hmm, okay. does he love this? Or does he hate it? What would it look like if he hates it? How, what would be going differently? So that's kind of the first thing is like, we really need to get into our headspace and figure out the language we're using and how it might be hindering our progress. Okay. The, the biggest thing that I'm seeing here in your notes is what it all comes down to is diet and sleep. So we start all of our consults with that. I'm seeing um, seven to nine hours of sleep. And then the diet, I see Chop and Harrison's pellets. With diet, both of the breakthroughs with, with Michelle and Mike yesterday was they're like, oh my gosh, what a difference it makes when the diet is spot on. Mm -hmm. And they already have the diet right, but they were doing a little too much. So mm -hmm. we fine tuned that and we had amazing results yesterday. The birds didn't feel starved. Yep. We used that extra motivation. We trained at the proper times based on their food intake. Yep. And we we're utilizing their natural cycles that they would encounter in the wild of when they would want to go look and work to find their food. And we had phenomenal breakthroughs. So mm -hmm. just recognize that, that you're not going to find success without the right diet. Okay. You might make two steps forward and 25 steps back, as you said. And I would say half of that equation is the diet. Uh, the other half is going to be sleep. Springtime, what are all the birds doing? Having the proper amount of sleep is, is critical, and that's between the diet and the sleep. That'll fix, honestly, majority of the problems, and it will. if it doesn't fix them, it will get you on track to where you can fix them. Okay. And it'll, you'll then be able to use the tools that we give you through YouTube, through our courses, <coughs> to okay. be able to, to make those improvements. Sleep is really a key thing. It needs to be 12 hours, and it needs to be uninterrupted. 
Okay. So uninterrupted isn't, I know you don't use a cage cover, but for example, it isn't putting a cage cover on while you watch TV in the same room. You let the dogs out at 10 o'clock. You go to bed by midnight, so you let them out one last time. You go to bed, and then the cat runs and bumps the cage at 5 a.m. because it's chasing a field mouse to your house. I don't know what it is, but that's not un uninterrupted. Okay. We want to make sure that, like in our case, we have aviary set up in the garage. It's temperature controlled. The lights go on, on, on and off in timers every 12 hour cycle. Let's get Smokey out and we'll try to try to see where we are and then we'll try to use what you've seen everybody do and you've done yourselves to get Smokey to that next level if we can. Okay. So, to set ourselves up for success, what do we need to do? Do you feel like Smokey will do okay in this space? I feel like she'll do okay. It's the fastest way out. Hey, what do you say? She is not happy she didn't work. All right, I'm going, to, I'm going to take this door off, actually, because I think we'll... I don't need it swinging shut on her as I'm trying to get her out. Are you worried that if you reach in, she'll bite you? Yep. You don't have to step do it up. on my account, I'm just asking. Step up. See, she wants to step up. Yeah. Step up. I saw You're her okay. foot going up, that's why I asked. You're okay. No, I... The way I have her... Yeah. And if you can set her on the she T-stand... She doesn't even want it. Let's set her on there. Do you smoke? I do. Do you smoke in the house? I do. I know that's bad. So okay. she did not want this walnut. I'm not sure why. So I was going to try to break a smaller piece and see if she's a little happier. She might just need to chill out a little bit. You got it? It's too small. Yeah, she's not she's very nervous. Uh, yeah, just let her chill nervous. out for a sec. But yeah, that step up was really nice. I saw her in there like lifting a foot, but she wasn't willing to like move from may, there. I can tell when I ask her, she's very nervous about it. And I would love to be able to put my hand and say, step up and have her come out of the cage and put her on the perch on the kitchen counter. I would love nothing more than that. Yeah. So she can interact and be with me. Put my hand in there. I say, step up. She puts one foot out sometimes, and then, but, because like I said, he did tell me she, that he had dropped her. Yeah. And I don't know how long that sticks with them, if it sticks with them forever. They don't forget. I don't know. We can work through it, but they, she won't forget it. Yeah. Would you like to step up? Step up? Good girl. This is huge. <laughs> this is huge. So, based on what I... Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Good girl. Good girl. She's saying girl. Huh? She's saying girl. Is that what she's saying? Yeah. Good girl. Do you want to try that? She's not very food motivated right now. So do you have any idea why she stepped up? Because I asked her. No. <laughs> That's not why. That is the last reason. <laughs> I, I don't Actually, know. Actually, it's really interesting. Do we want to see if anybody else knows why? Yeah. Because Michelle raised her hand. Like yeah. Your value increased in My this environment. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> in this environment. Okay. Yes. So you can only train over here. Okay. Yeah. Right. Every day. right. So when the food, water, or shelter is disrupted, okay. they're looking for a solution. Okay. When their food, water, and shelter is secure, they're going to look to get in trouble. Okay. It's a simplified way to, to explain a longer story, but in this environment, the shelter, as Michelle said, in the crate, like doesn't really want to be in the crate. You're right. you're a slightly better option than the crate. Okay. And we put her on this strange perch with this bird who's really doing some dancing in the background. <laughs> a bunch of weird looking people around. She doesn't feel safe enough to even eat a treat on this perch. Okay. Her shelter is again disrupted. Okay. She's looking to you for that solution because you're the only familiar thing. Okay. You can use that to your advantage. So oftentimes we say train in an unfamiliar environment. This might be a little too unfamiliar. Yep. Also, I don't think we're gonna get her to take treats in this environment because of her diet. Yeah, did she already have breakfast this morning? She did. Why'd you do that for? I didn't know it. She, she wasn't she was supposed <laughs> to have it. Doesn't Heather tell her? Mm -hmm. It was early. I thought it was better to have them on a schedule. Like, I feed them breakfast at seven in the morning, and then I feed them breakfast. They're banging on their cages at 4.30 at night. They wanna eat.
One of the worst things you can do is create a feeding schedule for your birds where they always get fed at 8 a.m. in the morning, they get their breakfast, and then at 5 p.m. in the evening, they get their dinner. What this does is build an expectation and basically just creates little monsters who learn to scream and throw a fit if you're one minute late, or they learn to do it just in anticipation of these meals because they want and know that you're gonna be right on time. So this is something that you need to be unpredictable about. I have a very large window of when I'm going to feed my birds breakfast. Breakfast time is anytime before noon and in the evening when they're going to get their evening meal it's anytime after 3 p.m. so and then before dark. So keep that in mind you want to have a nice window even if your schedule only allows for a couple hour window whatever you can do to stretch that so that you don't build an expectation and create little fluffy feathered monsters. We want to try to grab the banana and see if we can get some targets. What are your thoughts? Because I'm, I'm um, still here. So it's, it's hard because she has really high fear in this environment. Okay. And so we need an increased treat value than normal. And we have a decreased treat value than normal. Okay. So we could try the banana. She doesn't even want the banana. I just Did think her fear birds? outweighs yeah. her... <laughs> treat value. So let's talk fear level versus payout. If you, for example, are really terrified of heights and I offer to pay you a dollar for cliff jumping, there's no way you're going to do it because your fear of heights is greater than the payout that I'm offering you of a dollar. It's just not worth it for you to overcome your fear for that little of money, right? So we need to look at that the same way for our birds. If the bird's fear is too great and what you're offering isn't good enough, we really need to up the ante or we need to work on ways to decrease the fear. So if the fear isn't too bad, like you're just a little bit uncomfortable with jumping off the boat into the water, but I offer you 20 bucks, and you just are totally willing to jump in, it's more comparable to that. So just keep in mind what you're paying your bird to overcome. If the fear is too great, think about ways that you can really offer more incentive for the bird to want to over, to be willing to overcome that fear. Or in the other way, try to think about how you can work through in ways to decrease the amount of fear your bird has over that specific scenario. Because we can't get anything out of Karen's African Grey, we decide to have Karen work with Jaden, a similar size bird, on stepping up. Now, Jaden is Mike and Michelle's Amazon parrot, and he's been working on a ton of stepping up in their in-home consultations, and they've gotten very, very specific on what the step up should look like. Jaden is clipped, so it looks a little bit different with him, but he's also going to be way more tolerant of Karen's mistakes, which is going to make it a easier learning environment for her to start practicing the step up. We start with Mike and Michelle warming Jaden up and just showing what the process of his step up should look like before we bring Karen into the situation and have her ask the same thing. A lot of people learn best through what it does look like, but also what it doesn't look like. And because she has an older bird who already has a previous history with her and already has fear involved, whereas Jaden is a clean slate, he's been working on step up perfectly with everybody, with a lot of different people, and he's gonna be a a lot more tolerant and accepting of Karen's mistakes than her own bird, Smokey, would be with her. So we really want to set her up to be successful, to build her confidence so that when she goes to work with Smokey, she has a very good starting point of what it should feel like. Awesome. Cool. So obviously I'm right back over here just out of this bubble. So uh, with the target we clicked, so we owed, we owed him a treat. Okay. And then he just went into the step up, which is okay. okay. I wasn't totally clear on my instruction. Uh, the reason I start with the target is to establish that you're in training mode with this bird. Okay. Since this bird doesn't know you, we need to say, hey, we speak the same language. Okay. So it's like, do you want to? And then check the check the body language. Yep. Get the step up, then deliver the treat. Okay. Yeah. Step up. Awesome. Awesome. Step up. Good. Right. So I'm going to have you clean something up on the next. Hi. Would you like to step up? Oh, yeah. Thank you. You can almost go slightly higher. So let me show you the difference. Yes, look at the difference here. Versus if we come up a little bit, it's a little easier. I, I dramatize how high I went. If I was having them step down, I'm going to go early, but if I have them step down, it's a lot 
more that was more <laughs> like what you were trying to get. Okay. You want to bring it up a little, make it a little easier. Okay. See how much easier that felt? Yeah. So did you kind of feel the difference between yes. those? Yes, yeah. So yeah. because this bird's a baby, you've got this huge room for grace period. The best advice that I could give, and I gave it to Michelle and Mike over the last couple of days, is really set yourself up for success, and part of that is planning what, what should your training session look like and what's your plan B. Do you want to try another step up? Now that we've done a couple of practices with Jaden, try it with Smokey. You can reward on you or on the perch. Should I move, Jaden? Okay. No. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, she dropped. Was that yeah, a nut? Yeah, she didn't want it. So let's try another rep with the banana. And you could have the whole banana and just let it take a little bite. Step up. You want to? Yeah. Not a big jump. <laughs> that's good, she that's got, good, got, that's good. It. It's okay. She nibbled a little bit. Yep. Awesome. So remember how we did the target where you slowly brought in the target until yep. you got with a banana? Okay. Do you want to? Do you want to step oh. up? Thank you. Thank you. For Good girl. Good girl. Yep, there you go. That's cool. She's actually taking yeah. little pieces. Yeah, yeah. Step up. Do you want to? Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Oh, you pulled a mic. <laughs> yeah, okay. No. I'll explain it. So what go ahead and set the banana down for a sec. Dave's going to explain it to you. Here, go ahead and grab that. Just grab it. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yep. So yep. you were like, have the banana, just kidding. Okay. Right? Okay. If you had someone at school do that to you, yeah. what happens? <laughs> <laughs> don't ask Mike. <laughs> With your right hand, don't move your feet, touch the stick. Okay? Touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it, quick. Right? What you're doing, touch the stick. Oh, okay. Because right? you're coming in too much into the bubble. We want we want it to be like this. Right? So, take a bite of the banana. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> touch the banana, right? <laughs> right? And you're going to barely, you just barely bit it. Okay. Right? Versus like, not that much. Okay. Okay. All so right. that's what you're communicating to your bird. We okay. want to be clear. We want to be clean. We want to be nice. We want okay. to be predictable. Okay. Oh. We should just eat a nut, Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> All that to so. feed a banana. Just change the banana. Oh my God. Was that better? That was a lot better. <laughs> so do you want to? Uh, oh. so I did that one wrong. Yep. So this time, don't think so much about luring her onto your hand. You're just kind of showing, hey, do you want to work for this? Okay. And that's no longer about the banana. Okay. You might direct her attention with the banana, but it's not about the banana. Okay. Like this. Okay. I'm going to hide this nut. Okay? Yep. It's like, do you want to step up? She's looking at my index finger, right? Okay. The treat's down here. It's not about luring. Okay. It's about like, hey, do you want to work for this? Cool. Okay. Will you step up? Okay. Let's direct. There's there's a lot happening, right? Yep. So with this one, just think about keeping your banana at a little bit further distance. Okay. So she, she's got some attention on it. Okay. Ask her, do you want to step up? If she doesn't want to, then we'll change something. Do you want to step up? Yep. Good girl. And now the treat comes in way too fast and deep. Way too fast. <laughs> Okay. All right. Take two. Don't move your feet. Bite the banana. Oh my god. Okay. Again, with your fingers. All right. Touch the banana. That's what we want. Okay. You're still. Okay. Right? Okay. <laughs> I'll get it. It's going to be more dramatic the next time. I'm oh man. You. Please don't let him get there. Smash. <laughs> I'll do it. Good girl. Better? Did she get a treat? She bit the end of she touched okay, the end of it. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah. she just targeted the banana. But you know <laughs> yeah. who needs a treat? Aww. It's like this is a retreat step up though. See I'm just far enough, just far enough coming in. Boop. Doesn't care. Good girl. Right, but you can see my timing on that. Yeah. That's what we want. Slow down. 
Well. Shift down to first gear, lady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna have a first gear. <laughs> Good girl. Excellent. Slower. Good girl. She, she just She's just learned to like, target. Is that it. what I'm? Would you like to step up? Yep. Good girl. I know. That's my finger. See, so she that's. Didn't, she didn't even want to take the banana. I'm gonna give the treat the way I want you to give the treat. Look how you can't come any further over. That's it, that's it, that's it. Upper mandible and tongue only. Boom. Okay. There's no way he could have bit me. Would you like to step up? Good girl. Oops, slow stop there. And then you would slowly bring it in if she had the interest. So go ahead. Yep, right there. Can you kind of see what we're saying? Yep. When you watch this back, you're like, ah, oh, I get I'm going to be like, wow, I suck. Would you like to step up? Nope. Oop. Up. That was my fault, wasn't it? Yep, so you asked you want to step up, but did you wait for an answer? I did not. Okay, so let's try with the bigger banana, because that seemed to be a little better response. And then ask if she wants to. Would you like to step up? Cool. And slowly bring in the banana right there. She takes a little nibble. Good girl. And back down. A couple of things yeah, is that she, she was not real stoked about taking a treat from your fingers. Yep. So, cool, we don't have to, okay. right? The interesting thing about bird training is even though you're using a banana, I don't want you to use a banana long term, okay. but it's working. Okay. So let's start there. Okay. And then as we're there, let's think about eventually phasing it out. But since we have an environment that's working, we want to start there versus think like, no, we need to be upstairs in a, in a kitchen environment because that's where she loves to be. Like, well, no, let's, let's, this is working, let's start here. Even though you want to be able to give a treat from your hands, if it, the first time she was like, kind of going for your finger, they don't do that by mistake. Yeah. Right? And then right. the second time she really went for your finger. Yeah, she so she was trying to tell you like, I don't want to do that. Kind of one of the best notes you could take is when you experience failure, we pushed too far too fast. Okay. Go back to where it was last working well, and we slowly rebuild it from there. And whether you're free flying or just working on step up, I didn't start with step up with Harley because we were very likely to get a failure. So I started with what I knew she was going to do, and that was a target. And then I was pretty sure we could get a spin, and it turns out we got everybody to do a spin. So I didn't just start with a step up. We slowly rebuilt to where we needed to go. Have I had that bird step up for me? Yes, once. And I also got the FU feathers another time. Okay. Right? Yep. And for clarifications, it's a few feathers on the back of the head and neck. <laughs> so we would we'd get some of that. So I would push too far too fast when you rebuild it. Do you feel like you have some action steps moving forward? I do. I do. I need to work on myself as much as, more than the birds, because I'm giving them unclear signals. Yeah. Obviously. This has no bite marks in it. And we've used it for three days. That's what your target stick should look like. If it has bite marks, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, it's got a couple. And that's the third stick. <laughs> I learned that I need to change the way I take care of my birds, and I need to learn more how to pick up their subtle cues more. We're going to have big changes at home.